Hi, welcome to Craft Beer Bucket List with Big Ray and Mike, where we review beers you have to try before you die. Woo! Hello, everybody. Man, I'm excited tonight. I hope that I didn't scare you. If you're driving, please maintain both hands on the steering wheel. There's no need to turn the volume down. I'll fix this in post if it's too loud. But we are starting episode 25 of season two of your favorite craft beer review podcast, Craft Beer Bucket List with your hosts, Big Ray and Mike. I'm Big Ray, my best bro, my right-hand man, whatever other cliche thing I could call him, my bearded bro, just whatever. Mike, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Brother from another mother. Yeah. Dude, I am so stoked for this episode. I'm stoked for every episode, but this one's special, <laughs> dude. So special. Uh, I, that, that makes me feel good. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, glad you feel, <laughs> I'm glad you feel so special about this special episode. Yeah. Uh, it's like, dude. Well, I'll tell you why I'm happy about it. It's because it's got two beers that uh, are right down my alley as far as style goes. So that right? makes me pretty I, makes me anticipate the moment that I crack that first beer. Oh yeah. Um anyway, so uh before we move on, uh the two beers that you and I are gonna try tonight for episode twenty five is Little Treat by Bearded Iris, and this is a session stout um with coconut in it. And then we're going to drink, to round it out and close out episode 25, we're going to have Yazoo Brewing's Black is Beautiful. Um, and we'll talk more about the Black is Beautiful movement here in a minute uh, or the project. Um, so both of these are the Nashville area breweries. Um, you you pick these up uh, on one of your recent um, gallivants out that way. And uh, I, sir, much appreciate you snagging these beers. Oh, glad to do it, man. So I know we've had a lot of beers lately from the Nashville area, but dude, when I was there, I found so many amazing beers. I had a chance to visit a few breweries and I didn't realize how lit the beer scene was in the Music City. And yeah. I've yet to have a beer from there that I didn't like. So it's like, dude, and I'm glad I got to share a bunch of those with you because it's I think it's made great content for the podcast. Uh, but also we've had a lot of really fantastic beer. Oh man. And, and I, you know, some of the beers you gave me won't make it into the podcast. Um, they'll just go to our social medias, but I've got a backlog that I'm going to start, um, uh, you know, checking, checking, each one, checking each one off as we go through the holiday season. If I could only talk, I have a talking problem. Right. It's all good. That's why we have a podcast, so, Mike. We both have talking problems. Yeah. The voice of an angel. <laughs> wow, I haven't heard that in a long time. What a great song, by the way. <laughs> oh, man. You know, tonight's going to be a good night. Hey, can I crack my beer? I'm really thirsty. <laughs> Dude, please do. All right. And a one, two, three. Oh, dang. Man, you're going to pick it up, bro. <laughs> this beer was ready to be drank, dude. I popped it, and it like a big old... Glob of beer just hit my lips. Oh, um, that that sounds like it could be good, Mike. That's a really good can crack, by the way. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm let's hear you. Let's hear you go at it. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. That was good too. I'm anxious to hear what these sound like in post. See who wins the battle of the can cracks. Oh my gosh, Mike. It's pretty good beer. Um, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. So I had, I, I, I knew that Iris is a flower, but I had to Google bearded Iris and it really is a legitimate name of a flower. It's also the name of a legitimate brewery. <laughs> I did not know that. Uh, so uh, this um, little treat is a session stout, and it's brewed with uh, three different kinds of coconut, and it is tasty. Um, so let me let me read what uh, I found online real quick. You ready? 
Do it. Our first session, pastry stout, is a tasty little treat. Sweet sprinkles of toasted coconut, raw coconut, and swirls of coconut milk and lactose wrapped inside a smooth, easy-drinking body make for an irresistibly flavorful refreshment perfect for the summer heat. That, my friends, is Little Treat, a session stout, clocking in at 6% ABV from Bearded Iris Brewing in Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, you know, Tennessee. You know, and I read this in our show notes and whatnot, too. Um, I, I personally, again, this is me. I know we've talked about this in, in other episodes and even with a couple of our special guests. A stout for me is not a summertime beer. Um, I can see, though, with all the coconut, how this is dialed down a bit, how this would be easier to drink in the warmer months. Yeah. Um, but for me, this is still something I want this time of year when it's chilly willy out. Yeah, um, I would say this I is a fall this. beer. Yeah. Definitely. Um, because I'm not drinking this outside when it's hot. I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. I mean, um, so I mean, it tastes good. It tastes really good. I'm with you. I like the darker beers just because of the body. I like to have them when um, it's not as hot. Man. Oh, yeah, I'm totally with it. So this has got like a this is this is not a heavy bodied beer though. So maybe that's kind of what they're trying to go for. It's more medium bodied. Um, you know, it's it's got a little bit more carbonation to it. So you know they're they're trying here to make it a you know pull it away from that typical deep winter beer time frame. Sure, no, I can see that. It's got a it's it's got a, like a milk chocolateiness to it. Um, I mean, to me, it tastes like a, a very it tastes like a mild, smooth milk stout with some coconut in it. Um, you know, and I'm fine with that. It tastes really good. I mean, it's I don't know how you're feeling about it. It I would say there's nothing incredibly special about this beer, but it's really good at everything it does. Yeah, and uh, I'm not trying to take away from this beer, Mike, uh, but as we were getting things, you know, fired up for the podcast, I told you I was pre-gaming with a uh, a chocolate porter shake, yeah, uh, which is a stout from the Boulder Beer Company, um, and it was so chocolatey and and full of lactose. Um, I really think this beer got my palate activated to to even more appreciate this little treat because yeah. um, I'm really getting a lot of the coconut out of this. And uh, with the lactose in this, and the lactose I had in my first beer, it's uh, it's really, it's really coming together. Yeah, it says so coconut I'm, three ways. Coconut three ways. I, I kind of like that. Um, you know, a lot of times you get just you know like the the shaved coconut. It's not very sweet. You know, coconut on its own isn't sweet. Um, but, but I like how they have you know toasted coconut and uh, the swirls of coconut milk. They have they've added different flavor profiles to really bring out a, a nice coconut flavor. Now, I think had they not done that, it might've taken away from this a little bit, but having that trifecta of coconut awesomeness, um, just takes this beer to, uh, just up the next rung of the ladder for me. You're climbing up the ladder there, dude. I, um, I am. So, you know, man, I mean, I agree with everything you say. I think it, you know, the, so something I actually think works well for it here with the flavor and the balance is the little bit higher carbonation. So yeah, you know, that does make it, I think that makes a huge difference with this. Yeah. So, it, you know, in a lot of ways, I like my stouts to be dialed back a little bit, but this one's punched up, but with the flavor that they brought into the beer, you know, the balance of those, all those flavors, I think it's working really well. So, cheers to Bearded Iris. You know, they're on Facebook at Bearded Iris Brewing, but if you get on Instagram, it's just Bearded Iris. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Yeah. I, I, I wish... Dude, yeah, go ahead. No, I'm just going to say, I really like this beer, Mike. Um, yeah, I mean, I do too. Um, I don't want to say I'm disappointed, but just like the the my pregame beer, it was only 5.9%. 
ABV for for a porter or a stout, I think is really light. Now this comes in at 6% ABV. I want my stouts to be stronger though. I don't know how much that affects the flavor, but I want more. But this is a session stout, yo. This is supposed to be chill. Yeah, that's true. No, that's true. Okay, so I'll shut up. No, you're right. I forget this is a session stout. So it's yeah. supposed to be dealt back, so you can have a few. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You can, take a, okay, you, can so, take a, you can take a four pack of these out by the bonfire and chill with your bros. Totally true. So we'll just forget I said that because uh, whoopsie. Whoopsie. Um, yeah. So no, I, I totally forgot the session stout part of that. So, you know, I, I totally like this 6% because it is a session stout. Yeah. I'll yeah. do a, I'll do a flip flop there. All right. Maybe I should off. run for office in two years, Mike. How about that? <laughs> flip flopper. You should totally run for office. <laughs> I'm not even lying. <laughs> City council or bust. That's right. Like, I mean, what's, what's your platform? I like beer. You just want to see things get better for everybody. The vote. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah, man. So, all get, joking get, aside, Mike. Well, we need to get Emily back on the podcast so we can talk politics again. Absolutely I mean, right. Somebody knows it. That's her, you know. She's in it. Yes. So, I don't know. Yeah, man. You know, you know that episode, by the time this ep- this is going to air sometime in mid to late December, and uh, that was our season two kickoff special. That came out in June, Mike. That was six months ago already. Can you believe that? You know, I, no, I can't believe that. That seems like it was just yesterday. That's awesome. Yeah, man. I think so, it's awesome. So, uh, unbeknownst to everybody else, but now known to everybody else, um, we're about to wrap up season two. So, we'll have this episode, episode 25, and we're going to do the Christmas special because that's what we do. And then we're taking a break. A yeah, we're going to take a little bit of a break. Yeah, we're going to go on vacay. Not really. Not really. We both got other stuff going on, so it's not going to be a vacay. But we're, we are going to take a little bit of a break. We'll uh, we'll probably start picking up recording. I'm guessing back in you know maybe in February or so. Yeah, probably yeah. into January, first part of February, somewhere in there. Yeah. So we just need time to uh, spend time with some family and stuff like that. So, right, yeah. Plus, <laughs> I don't know, dude. You're, you're gonna think I'm crazy. I'm halfway thinking about starting a different podcast. Uh, you know, I'm not surprised by that. I mean, dude, this is a lot of fun. I know we're getting away from the beers here for a minute. Yeah, but you know, we've talked about it so many times. We record on Monday nights. You know, yeah. we both have very busy day jobs. We both have families. Um, but this is something we look forward to every week. Yeah, and it's so much fun, and uh, you know with the listenership that we have, um, I think the audience really enjoys it as well. Otherwise, they wouldn't listen to us. Um, but dude, this is—it's a thing, and, and we get to try so many beers from all over the country, so many styles and different flavors, and we've met so many great people along the way. And it's just—it's uh, fantastic, dude. I love this so much. Yeah, no, I mean, I—I I agree with everything you just said. It's like, man, what a treat. It's a treat. You know, it really is. But at the end of the day, you know, we're um, drinking a little treat, but doing this podcast with you is a big treat. (laughs) It is a big treat. Um, But, you know, but we got to be real. You know, we're both professionals. And again, we both have families. And, uh, you know, we're in quickly encroaching the holiday season, you know, as we record this. And uh, there's just a lot going on, dude. Yeah. So it'll be fun to to pick this back up, you know, after the, the new year. And I'm excited for this, Mike. You know, I turned 40 uh, the first week of February. I do know. So uh, that might be a, a cool way to to kick off my new decade with, uh, <laughs> you know, a whole bunch of new beers under my belt yeah. and a new season of Craft Beer Bucket List with Big Ray and Mike. I agree. I think that's all sound. Dude, so the, the one <sighs> thing that we need to solidify right now. So we've, did, we've been doing food pairings for the first two seasons. Oh, yeah. We're going to move away from that for season three. We're going to go to a song pairing where we pick a song that goes with the beer. (laughs) (laughs) Is that funny to you? Yes. Because I could see you like singing that George Jones and Garth Brooks duo beer run for every beer. (laughs) 
<laughs> you know, uh, that wouldn't be wrong. Ray, <laughs> Ray, if that's wrong, I don't want to be right. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh, uh, I, I definitely can see some Billy Ray Cyrus making appearances. Um, you know, maybe some Lady Gaga. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, totally, dude. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I guarantee you the first beer I have, I'm going to say, this reminds me of the song Shallow by Lady Gaga. <laughs> oh, man. Anyhow, so <laughs> to go back to the beer, this is really good, man. I'm I'm enjoying this a lot. I think what I like most about it is it's so easy drinking. So the flavors are mellow. Um, you know, the, 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 th- from the front to the back, it's a very, just the easy going beer as far as flavors go. Uh, the, the carbonation's kicked up a little bit, which makes, which I think helps it out as far as drinkability with this one. And because it's not overly boozy, um, you know, you could have a couple of these and still be in good shape and have a good time. No, absolutely, dude. Yeah. So, um, you want me to go first on rating and pairing? Yes, sir. Do that. So I'm going to give this an eight out of 10. So I think it's a, it's a really good, really solid beer. Um, as far as pairing something with this, you know, is, um, I, I think I was thinking about this for a minute. I, I think some plain, and I don't mean this in a bad way, just some plain cheesecake, nothing, none of the crazy stuff, just plain straight up cheesecake would go well with this. So it's going to be, a, it's going to have, we're going to have dessert with this beer. What do you think? Um, I love cheesecake. So, and I like that a lot, actually. And we may have talked about this before, but you know, for my wife's birthday a few years ago, I had cheesecake flown from New York City to Oklahoma for her birthday. Yeah, I remember you telling me about this. Yeah. Tell me more. <laughs> So, um, I'm sure you've heard of the Carnegie Deli, you know, oh, New York City. From you, I have. I mean, I, so, overall, I don't know much about it. So, one of the food is phenomenal. Um, I, I love the sandwiches, but their cheesecake is killer. And uh, you can go on their website and buy it. And this is, you know, not a paid endorsement, just total free plug. Um, if you're willing to spend the, the, the extra money, you can get a full-size New York style cheesecake made in New York city overnighted to your home. It's a how, beautiful thing. How many, how many buckaroos is this going to set me back? Um, I, I want to say it cost me about 150 bucks. Okay. For, for the now, shipping course, and everything. Yeah. That's everything okay. out of the gate. Total turnkey operation. Um, pick out what you want in and they, they overnight. The only way to do it is to overnight it. There's no other option, which makes sense. And it comes in a pack with like the, the a package with the ice packs in it, so it stays fresh. Yeah. So I want to say just the shipping alone was like a hundred bucks of that. Dang. So like, so it's for my wife's birthday. Yeah, it's like I'm just gonna on a random Wednesday. Hey, let's just get a cheesecake from New York City because why not? I kind of feel like you um, would do that. That is like something I would do. Yes. Um, <laughs> TBH. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, but. Yeah, so for something special like that, really for wifey, that's her favorite thing, uh, dessert wise, is cheesecake. So it's totally yeah. worth it. Awesome. So, but no, I like your food pairing there, Mike. I really do. Yeah. So what's, what's um, yours? So I'm I'm on board with you here. I'm going to give this one an eight out of ten as well. Uh, but I really want some coconut shrimp with this beer, Mike. Um, I I think the two would go together really well. Huh. All right. And. Yeah. Uh, so there's any consortium of, of sides you could get with this that would go really well, depending on somebody's, you know, flavor palette, just what goes good for them. Uh, but I, I really want some jumbo shrimp, you know, with the coconut batter, not tempura, coconut. We've all had it. It's fantastic. Uh, I think just the, the subtle sweet of the coconut and the shrimp would go really good with this beer because this is dialed down so much of being a session stout. Yeah, um, it would be great. And this has a, a nice subtle sweetness about it from the coconut. I think the two would, would go together really well. I, you know what? I'm going to agree with you. I think, I think you've got a good idea here. Yeah. Good job. So Mike, I've got a really random here. A really random. Yeah. So random dude. All right. Do you like smelly candles? 
<laughs> I think all candles are smelly, right? Well, okay. A scented. Do you like scented candles? I mean, they're all right, I guess. No, oh, okay. I, I don't. I don't like have a strong affinity. I mean, sure, I like them. So, my family. I say I took my wife and my daughter to to one of the big box stores earlier. We had to yeah. pick up a couple of things, and I love to stop by the smelly candle aisle. Okay. Um, I, I love smelly candles, dude. Somebody can make fun of me all you want to. Like, I'm 6'5", I'm 400 pounds. Like, seriously, make fun of me, I dare you. I'll cry. Do you want to make a big man cry? Because you can if you want to, but whatever. I like smelly <laughs> candles. I don't even care. What's your favorite um, I, scent? Um, I like the super sweet ones. But my, my favorites are, I, I love this time of year because they come out with the holiday candles. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I feel like I should go buy some Uggs and some sweatpants, but... <laughs> I'm a huge fan of anything pumpkin spice when it comes to these things. Oh my gosh. So I found a pumpkin spice donut candle tonight and bro, yeah. it is glorious. All right. So having my coconut stout and my chocolate porter pregame beer in this pumpkin spice, I'm just smelling. Wow. It's like, oh, so I really like lavender candles smells. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like the smell of lavender. Those are nice. Yeah. But beyond that, like if I was going to go, you know, I'd probably go like the more, you know, the, the Christmas stuff, like the pine tree and the spruce and all that kind of stuff. I like that right. stuff. I like to smell that. I can get down with that. Yeah. I mean, those, I like those. I'm a huge fan of like the apple pie ones or cinnamon apple. Yeah. How many, how many scented candles do you have in your house? You think? Um, you know, I don't know in my house, but I'm, I'm looking at my desk right now. I'm going to spin around. I've got one, two, three, four, five. Jesus. I have six on my desk. Yeah. So, uh, well, one of them, my daughter <laughs> made at the fair last year. So go ahead and make fun of me for that. But I have one the kiddo made. Otherwise I'm I have five smelly candles. That. Yeah. So nobody's going to make fun of you for that. Make fun oh, no, of you for the that. other ones. The other ones. Yeah, for sure. But I have six. I have six of these at my desk. I have a massive desk in my home office. Yeah. Um, so I have plenty of room for it. But now I've got six uh, unique candles, all with their own different scent. My desk is just a door that I painted black, and I've stuck brewery stickers all over it. It's my desk. Right. No, I like your desk, too. That's super cool. You know, I've been to your house. I've seen that. It's in a lot of your Instagram posts. I think it's pretty sick. It's a very unique yeah. desk. I like it. It's uh, at some point I'll have enough stickers on one side that I can like, uh, you know, what do they call lacquer or whatever you put on over everything. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like a, the lacquer clear coat, whatever. Yeah. Same thing, I guess. So I'll get enough stickers and then I'll flip it and, and start on the other side. Oh, very nice. And when it's all said and done, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with it. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh man. So, so, you know, I need more beer stickers. Um, you got into the beer sticker game before I did. Um, you know, I've got a beer fridge in my office and I finally got the front of it covered in stickers Yeah, and I started working on the top. Um, so I need more because I want to cover, you know, the two sides and the top with stickers. So I'm going to challenge our listeners. If you want to help me decorate my beer fridge and Mike's desk, um, drop us a DM on Instagram and we will get you some shipping details to our, our post office box. And I would love to tag you in these posts for beer stickers. How about that, Mike? Let's get some audience engagement here with this. What do you think? Yeah, and, and we can return the favor. We can send them some stickers from Craft oh. Your Bucket List. Yeah, heck yeah, man. We'll get, I've, I've got duplicates of a good number of stickers. I'm more than happy to do a sticker trade with somebody. I yeah. think that would be awesome, dude. Yeah. I agree. I concur. Yeah, man. Yeah. So before, uh, before we go to our dairy podcast commercial that everyone's heard two dozen <laughs> times, there's no sense even hiding it. It's uh, yeah. it's you're gonna they're gonna hear that in a couple seconds. Yeah. But before I get to that, Mike, I have a one question quiz. Okay. Yeah. What's up? I oh love these. snap! Yeah. So, the Jamestown settlers created the first American batch of blank, although it may have. Not tasted quite the way we know and love it today. The original word for this drink comes from the word grog. 
What is it? Uh, gruel. No. Uh, hold on. The original word for this. Grolsch. It's a Grolsch beer. I knew it. Thanks. Grolsch. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> now, if it helps, this drink is also made with rum. Oh, I have no idea. I'm not a mixed drink person. Um, <sighs> it's made with rum. Uh, also, it rhymes with Krog. <laughs> <laughs> if, think, if that helps bog cog dog <laughs> i don't know man just tell me nog oh eggnog All eggnog right. yeah gotcha, gotcha. well I'll, I'll be honest i should have i should have probably eventually you led me to the water and i didn't drink on that one yeah it's all good man yeah so let's take a break. Let's everybody listen to the dairy podcast yes. commercial and we'll come back with their second beer. <laughs> All right. Woo. Woo. <laughs> that was a lot of fun, dude. All right. Welcome back. This is Big Ray, or this is Mike and Big Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they know who we are at this point. I'm they, Mike. Yeah, you're Big I'm Ray. Drinking. We're both here. We're drinking beer. Um, so uh, you know, you talked about your your pregame beer. I forgot to talk about mine. Yeah, so, tell us. I saw your post on Instagram about it. I want to hear about it. Yeah, so it's it's a it's a Pilsner from East Rock Brewing. It's in New Haven, Connecticut. A buddy, uh, I'll just say his first name, Joe. A buddy of mine named Joe sent me this beer and a couple others. Um, and I'm excited to try it. I was excited to try it. So I, I had their Oktoberfest beer, which was really solid. And then uh, I had, you know, sitting here working on some stuff for the podcast tonight. And was like, man, it's a good day for a pregame beer. Cracked it open. It was really nice. It's super crisp. Um, overall, just a solid beer. And I, and I, I liked it a lot. So uh, big kudos to East Rock uh, Brewing there in New Haven. Um but let's not take our eye off the prize, Ray. Let's not do that. And our prize tonight is the Black is Beautiful beer, the Imperial Stout. And we're having Yazoo Brewing, their iteration of the Black is Beautiful. So I got a one question quiz for you. Oh, yeah. What is it? How many breweries participated and made a Black is Beautiful beer? Uh, last time I looked, the count was over 1,100 globally. Yes. You're pretty close. So I'm going to give you a ding, ding, ding. It's 1,192. Awesome. How, how many different countries are represented? Oh, man. Um, I want to say probably at least 45 or 50. You're nowhere even close. It's 22 different countries. Oh, Okay. But so I remember so, reading that, but it, it yeah. was in multiple countries, but I, don't, I honestly didn't remember the number. I totally guessed. So I know you're in Oklahoma. How many Oklahoma breweries participated? Uh, again, I didn't look that up. I'm guessing maybe seven or eight. Fifteen. Oh, awesome. Way to Dude, go, I, Oklahoma. Yeah, I was really impressed with that number. I was like, all right. Um, and I know Tulsa and Oklahoma City both have a pretty good beer scene, so... Um, but still, that's impressive, uh, you know, for Oklahoma to have 15 different breweries yeah. participating um, and for almost 1,200 breweries to be um, participating in Black is Beautiful Beer overall. Really impressive. And we'll talk Absolutely. a little bit more about what this means here in a minute. But um, I'm going to I want you to crack your beer first, man. I would love to crack my beer first, Mike. You ready? Do it. Do it. Do it. How was that? That's pretty nice. I'm pretty, ready for yours, buddy. Pretty nice. All right. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I th yours is going to win that one. That's all right. Sometimes, sometimes you got to know, got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Right. No yeah, it's still away, sounding no good on run. my end. <laughs> no, I just I know yours is a little bit more crisp on the pop. So 
um, this beer overall um, represents a lot of things, and I don't want to get political, too political, or anything like that. But what I what I want to say is, what I think it represents to me is that um, you know we value life, and whenever anybody um, is doesn't get to have that value of their life. Um, at the same level of others, we should pick them up. Right. And, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, the, the black lives matter movement is more about everybody mattering at the same rather than more so one than other. And I think that gets kind of lost in translation. Right. But, um, I think you and I've talked a little bit about this, you know, it's, um, I like to use the burning house scenario, you know, if, um, if you call in and say, Hey, my house is on fire, you know, to the fire department, they're supposed to come out and help you put out the fire. Black lives matter. Same black lives matter is a similar to some of them say, you know, and they say all lives matter. That's the, the other part, right? So, you know, when you say black lives matter and you pick up the phone and you say, Hey, my house is on fire. And the, the person on the other end goes, well, all houses matter, so we can't really come help you. That's really what we're going after here. And I think that's the the essence of what we're trying to do is bring pick people up and make sure that we all have the same chance in life, right? No, absolutely, dude. I can't so, argue that. Yeah. And you know, uh and I'm I don't want to go too far into, you know, faith or religious stuff either, but I think that um I think that most people can agree that um life is beautiful. And everybody should have the same chance at happiness, joy, contentment, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, um, you know, try not to uh, hog the conversation here so much. When, when a lot of this stuff was going down, I reached out to a couple of friends um, that um, of color, I would say people of color, um, I just asked what the right thing to say was because I, you know, I don't, you and I both grew up in not so great circumstances. We've talked about that quite a bit, but I just sure. have no idea what it means to be a person of color. Uh, so I reached out to a couple different people and, you know, uh, just ask what I should say. Cause I, you know, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, but I also want to make sure that they know that I care. So, and that's what this means to me is this is a lot of people saying we care. So anyway, can I get a cheers? Absolutely, man. Cheers. I'm going to drink cheers. the beer now. I'm going I'm to be quiet. You can talk for a second. <clears throat> so, I mean, I could echo almost that same sentiment. Uh, I, I, that's one thing I love about the craft beer community. Um, it's, it's inclusive. It's, it, it, they do their best. I say we. I'm part, I believe I'm part of the craft beer community um, where I'm not a brewer. Uh, you know, I'm not a sister I'm just a guy that really enjoys craft beer. Um, but there's one thing I love, there's uh, inclusiveness in the community, right? There's room for everybody and there's room to, to agree and there's room to disagree. Um, but you still, you, you want to welcome everybody. There, there can be some things that, that you don't see eye to eye on and you can still get along. There's some things like racism. Well, there's no room for that shit anywhere. And I'm not, I'm not going to bleep that out. There's no need for that. I'll just come out and say it. there's not. Uh, but there's room to, to agree on, or, or disagree on, on how to, to fix that or make it better, right? Because I think we all have an idea of what we can do to make it better. We all know we need to make it better. Um, and on politics, religion, anything else, there's room for everybody here. And I think it's pretty badass that somebody came up with this idea and almost 1,200 breweries in 20 plus countries got on board and did what they could to help promote that, right? We, we know there's a lot of wrongs out there and we need to make it right. And if, and if we could get millions of people to get on board just by supporting this, um, I think that's a step in the right direction. And I think that's pretty cool. So kudos to, to everyone who's done that, who's, who's bought these beers and, and held up and said, Hey, let me be counted amongst the people that says, yes, there's a problem. We need to fix it. Yeah. So and I, absolutely. Um, so you can go to, to get more information. You go to black is beautiful dot beer. 
um, which is a wonderful website name to begin with, but it's got a lot of information there. And it basically they're saying, you know, Black is Beautiful is a collaborative effort to raise awareness for the injustices uh, people of color face daily uh, and raise funds for police brutality, reform, and legal defenses for all those that have been wronged. And, um, you know, recently I watched um, David Chappelle on Saturday Night Live. I, did you catch that by chance? I did. So, you know, and he, and I, and I posted it to my Facebook and I think he summed it up very well is that, you know, um, it's, it's a time of a lot of a ten, lot of tension right now across all different varieties of folks. And, you know, the, the thing we have to keep our eye on is that we, we don't hate anybody. We hate that feeling, whatever we're feeling, whether it's, we're feeling like we're lost whether it's for feeling like nobody wants us or likes us or loves us or whatever that is, that's a feeling. That's not a person. And it's okay to not like that feeling. Um, but we need to find a place to love each other, uh, care about each other and fight that, that any of those negative feelings, we can fight those and still love people. And man, it was just, man, it really hit home. I, you know, it's just something that like I sat there and watched, watched his monologue and then it kind of, I mean, I, I had to go back and watch some of the skits just because that monologue was so powerful. Right. Um, anyway, so, and I, I think that's what we're at, we're at here too is, and, and I know the, at this point, the Black is Beautiful beer has been out for a while. You know, it's, it it's, has been, it's, sure. Um, but I think that I really like, so I know we're going to do a Christmas special because uh, that's what we're going to do. We, we like Christmas beers. But this is the end of season two, essentially, right? We're going to do a season two, but we're going to do a Christmas special and we're going to take a break. So I thought it was ultimately fitting that we ended on such a, a, a fantastic beer uh, as for as far as what it means and what it tastes like and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, so about the beer, you know, um, you know, as far as the 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 smell, you know, it's it's I'm getting a little bit of hops in the smell actually for a stout that I didn't expect to have a little bit of hop, a little bit of hop smell um, overall. Um, and then, you know, a lot of that chocolatey roasted, dark malty type stuff in there as well. And then as I drink it, you know, the, um, it's got some more, a little bit more of the coffee roastiness came through a little bit. So, um, so far I like it. I'm going to take a few more drinks here. Yeah, man. So, uh, I'm with you. I, I think this is a fantastic beer. It's an Imperial Stout. comes in at 10% ABV. And it's got a lot of the... I think this is a more traditional style stout. Um, I do get a little bit of the hoppiness up front. Not not so much. Um, but again, a, a lot of those roasty notes. A lot of coffee comes through on this for me. Uh, a little bit of chocolate here. But this just has a strong, powerful taste to it. And that's exactly what I want from an Imperial Stout. This, for me, fits the bill. Um, it's not super creative. It's not anything out there and crazy. Um, it's just those roasted notes with chocolate. There's no fruit notes that come through in this. Maybe if, if anything, some light vanilla. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, it's nice. I like it. And you it's know, super for, smooth. Yeah, no, it is smooth. And it's, so the carbonation is a little dialed back on this. So we went from, the the little treat um from bearded iris to this and the so the carbonation was kicked up on that and the carbonation here is a little bit dialed back um but i must say overall that you know with both of these beers they have more of a medium body which i kind of expected this to be a little bit heavier as far as the body goes but it is it's actually i would classify this as a medium bodied beer and the carbonation is a little bit more dialed back so you know it drinks a little smoother in in my book Right. So, so does this finish a little dry for you? Uh, yeah, it does. yeah, it, it kind of does. Yeah. I kind of like that. Yeah, it does have a, you're pretty, you're, you're good, good one on that one, man. I wasn't thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, hmm. Yeah. Barely dry it, finish it, there, but that's all right. That's, that makes yeah, it, it just it, hangs it's, out it's a little. Beer. Yeah. Yeah, man. Boom. It's good beer. Boom. So, 
and and I want to say thank you. You actually picked this beer up, so uh, kudos to you for snagging these for me. I had gone to a couple different breweries to pick up their, uh, you know, their Black is Beautiful beer, and by the time I got to each one, it was, of course it was pandemic time timing as well, but everybody was out. So. Yeah, it, these were a hard dude. When I saw these, I was like, I have to grab a bunch of them because I, I was the same boat. I had looked at a good number of places, and uh, when I'd asked them, people like, "Oh, we're sold out right now." And uh, so I get it. You know, I imagine a lot of places did small batches of these. Yeah, um, and it became very popular, which I'm a hundred percent on board with. But when I saw them, I snagged them immediately. You're like, "Gotta have it," or "You know, you want it." Gotta have it. Right. That's the second time I've used that song tonight. It is. Um, the, yeah. the first time was before we started recording, I think. But yeah, Maybe uh, so. That's uh, yeah. okay. Full disclosure, you may not hear the first time I sang it. Yeah, no, it's all good. So, I mean, you know, we, we, we do quite a bit, <laughs> you know, uh, before we actually get into the podcast, we're online to get 20, 30 minutes conversating, you know, again, reviewing show notes and whatnot, blah, blah. So there's a lot of stuff that gets said before we actually hit the record button. So it's yeah, uh, so we've it's got all like good. the pre-podcast. First half of the podcast, break, second half podcast, post podcast. Yeah. So there's there's quite a bit that goes into making one of these. And not that it's a bad thing, it's just it's what it is, but I don't know if everybody that listens to this uh knows anything about that. And that's fine. That's fine. Show some respect, folks. Show some respect. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're, so, they're going whatever. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um but no, I'm gonna circle it back into the beer this time. Yeah, let's do it. Um so we're I've I've had a good number of stouts. Again, I, I we've talked about this I know before, but because of you, Mike, I've I've had a lot more stouts than I ever would have ever would have had on my own. Um I don't think this is my favorite stout, and I may catch some hate for saying that, but it's still really darn good, right? This is easily a delicious beer. Um, you know, the only beer I ever gave a ten out of ten, the only ten out of ten on this podcast even was an Imperial Stout. Um, this isn't at that level. This is still pretty damn good. This is a, a rock solid representation, I think, of the style. And uh, it's I, I, I'm digging it. This is good. And, and I've had a few of these before. You know, we, uh, we cracked these open tonight. I knew it was a good beer. Um, I think I I bought what a dozen of these or so. You know, when I saw them, I drank a few. I'm like, yeah, you know what? Why not? So I'm, I'm happy that I've had this and experienced it before we're recording and talking about it. Um, but I would pick up some more of these. What do you think? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I completely agree with you. Um, I love the cause, um, wholeheartedly support it. The beer is just okay. Um, I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's anything great. Um, you know, the, and, and, that, and that's fine. It's a solid beer. It's 10%. So it's meant to, um, you know, it's meant to be 10% what I'll do is I'll give it a rating. Um, overall, I think it's a seven and a half to eight because of the cause. I'll go ahead and bump that to the eight. Um, so I think it's, it's, a, it's an eight out of 10. It's a solid beer. Nothing, nothing too crazy or nothing too special. Um, you know, I, I think this is a beer that you could do some variations with, um, or so, so, and not so much the, the name of it or the cause, but the, the base of the beer itself. The Imperial Stout that's actually in can. I think you could do some variations with that. It's a b- good base beer to do if you want to, you know, do one-offs or whatnot. So I think there's some there's some opportunity there overall. So the and I, f- I forgot to mention um, the the beer recipe came from Weathered Souls Brewing Company, and they're in San Antonio, Texas. So they're the ones that created the recipe that and shared it with all these other breweries, so that we you know everybody has their own little take on it but the base recipe should be the same um so you know i think it's a it's it's an all right beer um you know but you know it's just like a lot of other stuff is you know when you're when you're doing a beer for a cause you're you know you don't want to be too crazy because you don't you just don't want to eliminate somebody from buying it so like when i think of that like if this had been like a 12 percent or 14 percent imperial (laughs) double imperial whatever you want to call it at that point um, I've seen some crazy names, but I mean, you don't want, you don't want to do too crazy on that end as far as being a stout, which I think was appropriate. You don't want to do too many crazy flavors because you want a lot of people to drink it and enjoy it. Right. 
So I think, I think in that way it, it works, you know? So I, I'm going to give it an eight out of 10. And uh, as far as um, food, I would pair it with, you know, I don't know why, but right now, I, and this is going to sound funny. I'm just thinking about a grilled cheese sandwich. And I know I've said that before with other beers, but maybe I just love grilled cheese sandwiches, but I could really go with a grilled cheese sandwich right now. What about you? I like grilled cheese. I like grilled cheese sandwiches. Oh, I know you like grilled cheese sandwiches. What would you rate the beer? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm with you, man. Like I said, this isn't my favorite stout at all. It's it's not, but it's it's a, I think it's a solid representation of the style. Um, I would give it an eight out of ten as well. And I would and I would bump it up a little bit again because of the cause, right? And we've talked about a good number of beers on this podcast supporting causes, and this is absolutely one that I'm on board with. I think it's fantastic. I love the fact again, that uh, somebody made this recipe and it started and I forgot that it came out of San Antonio and it's even printed right on the can here. It's on right on the label. So huge shout out kudos to a weathered souls brewing out of San Antonio, Texas in all the uh, almost 1200 breweries who, who signed up. So I know we've talked about that, but I think it's pretty damn important. I don't mind saying it again. No, absolutely. I, you know, Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so it, yummy beer, right? This is totally worth adding to the craft beer bucket list. Eight out of ten. Uh, we know lots and lots of these have been sold and consumed and enjoyed. Um, but as far as a, a food pairing, I've been thinking a lot about this. And uh, oh yeah, this is what, one. I, <laughs> what are you gonna do, man? You've been thinking a lot about it. I have been, and. I really want a pasta dish with this. Um, I, I did not expect that. So, you know, our, our friend Corey Williams, who wrapped out season one uh, with us, you know, episode 25, we we did a couple of stouts on that episode. Yeah. I never thought about pasta with a, a stout until he mentioned it. Um, but recently at home, I've been cooking a lot with portobello mushrooms and whatnot. And I want a, a nice red sauce with some portobello mushrooms in this. And, uh, and some big meatballs, you know, just some really just strong, you know, traditional Italian flavors, but a little more earthy. You know, I think the yeah. mushrooms will bring it down some earthy notes. And I think that would pair fantastic with this beer. Well, there you go, man. There you go. All right. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, dude, what a so, solid so, lineup tonight. I was going to say, just remind everybody real quick, uh, a little bit more. Would you rate it? What would you pair with it? Uh, this one, again, I would give it an 8 out of 10, and I would pair it with uh, some some pasta. With Definitely have some mushrooms in that pasta sauce for those earthy notes and flavors. Okay. Yeah, yeah so to, to go back to what you're about to say, it is a solid lineup. A solid lineup indeed. Um, before we get out of this beer, I'm going to remind everybody, just go check out black is beautiful dot beer. Um, and, and go support a brewery that's local as local as you, as possible to you that, uh, has the beer. Um, overall, uh, big Ray and Mike, that's me. Tried two different beers tonight. We had the beer to die little treat first. Actually, Ray, Ray mention again, your pregame beer. Uh, my pregame beer was the chocolate porter shake from the Boulder Beer Company, and then my pregame beer was the uh, East Rock Pilsner from East Rock Brewing Company. Uh, so, and then so together we had the bearded iris little treat. Um, I gave it an eight. Ray gave it an eight. I said you should eat cheesecake. He said coconut shrimp. I think both of those sound really good. Overall, it's an eight out of ten rating. Really good beer. Then we both had the Yazoo, Black is Beautiful. Um, again, I gave it an eight. Ray gave it an eight. I said you grilled cheese. Ray says pasta with mushrooms. Again, I think either way it's a win. Um, so th this is a pretty kind of this is kind of funny that overall we gave each beer an eight. Um, we agreed on every single rating. Every it's a rare one. bird. Yeah, it is rare. So I, you know. Both solid beers, uh, two beers add to the bucket list, man. What do you think about that? I think that's awesome. That's what, yeah. that's what I think. It is pretty awesome. All right. I want to say, uh, Ray, 
do the do the outro. I will do that, Mike. But you know, before I, before I get into that, Mike, thank you. I'm going to say thank you to you first. Um, you know, we're wrapping up season two, so that's 50 episodes. Um, specials aside. I've had so much fun doing this. We've been doing this over a year now and we've got an added 300 plus beers uh, reviewed on this podcast. So, so many amazing flavors. And again, a lot of experiences and opportunities and people met online and in real life uh, through our venture with this. So thank you for, for coming up with this idea and uh, spearheading this. And, um, so just bringing this, you know, venture to my life. I've had so much fun. I enjoy it. And uh, so thank you. It's you're awesome, welcome. Dude. No, seriously, you're welcome. I've had a lot of fun too, man. Oh, I know you have, it's, dude. It's we, been real. It's been real. Absolutely it is. And I tell you what makes it even more fun for me, dude, is the audience. The audience engagement, you know, being tagged in posts on Instagram uh, again, meeting people in real life, making friends along the way, meeting so many unique, cool individuals. Um, I absolutely love that. So thank you to the audience out there. You guys are awesome. Uh, we get to experience a lot of cool things together. And, and I love that. I love community, even though we're, we're social distancing through COVID. Uh, we're all finding, you know, unique new ways to do things and still engage socially while uh, doing our part to to keep the curve, hopefully going the right direction. I know that varies state by state, county by county, whatever, blah, blah. But y'all are awesome. And I have to say thank you. Um, you keep us going. And uh, that's awesome, man. So I, I love the folks in the craft beer community. So, but more to, to boilerplate type fare here. Um, I appreciate all y'all. I really do. Uh, make sure you check out the show notes to this podcast. Uh, check out the breweries that we featured. Reach out to them on their social media and their websites. Give them some thumbs up, likes, and shares, and uh, support what they're doing. And uh, while you're at it, check us out on social media. You can find us at Craft Beer Bucket List on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Be sure to tag us in new beers that you're trying. Uh, if you have any recommendations, hit us up. Tag us. We'll see what we can do to find those beers in our location or in our travels. We'd love to review them on a future episode in Season 3. Because the season three is absolutely going to happen. We've been renewed. You know, <laughs> yes. Woohoo. Contract renewed. With uh yeah, because we don't have one of those yet, but it's cool. Uh, but we're doing a season three anyway. But while you're at it, man, find us on Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, Google, wherever you find your podcasts. Be sure to subscribe, give us a rating. We love to hear whether we're doing good or bad. And also check us out at anchor.fm slash craft beer look at list. Be sure to hit that support button if you want to and uh, help us find more awesome craft beer to review to tell you guys about. If you want to do that, no pressure. And as always, please, please, please never, ever, ever drink and drive. Enjoy the holiday season. Love your family and friends and uh, drink local, support local. It's super huge to do that. And we will see you guys on the Christmas special. And we'll catch you on another episode in Season 3. Adios!